show, which is wonderful. That's what everyone loves about it. But I think we overall, we were able to take a little modern spin on it while still keeping the values of the show true. I love classic shows and I love the music and the style of the classic shows. I just think it's really good to take a look back in time and, and see what life was like back then. And Studying the music from this era um, was a lot of fun. It was also neat to, for some of the, to see some of the kids as they realized, oh, I've heard this song before. My grandparents remember seeing the show back when they were younger and they were excited to come see me perform it in the modern day. But I think it really does hold up as a show that is just, it's funny, it's just trying to be a fun show. I also think that they learned about a different style of humor. Uh, there were some phrases that I didn't quite understand, some, some words I had to look up. Performing a show like Guys and Dolls in modern day can really show us how far female empowerment has come since the 1950s. It shows us what we've done successfully in the past and what we can still do today to empower females even more. Modern day theater is so different from like these old classics and so I felt like during this production we really had to um, research and really dive into character development. I think it's important to uh, keep a hand or figure on what was done in the past. Like it's good to like revisit your roots and like see where you came from, see what started what you're doing now because if somebody didn't write Guys and Dolls, we wouldn't have the new shows. I, I think we all learned a lot from it. Working on a show like Guys and Dolls that's set in a totally different time period and was written in a totally different time period was kind of scary going into it as a teenager, um, just finding ways that you can relate to the material, but Mr. Steiner and Miss Megan and Miss Hampton all made sure that we really understood the material before going into the process so that we were able to make our characters as honest as possible. It was important to me that our production was grounded in the cartoonish nature of the stories of Damon Runyon from which the show draws its inspiration. We tried to create a fun, playful, and colorful world on stage, while also working with our actors to ensure that their characters were both rooted in the style and also informed by modern sensibilities about the relationships between men and women. I saw, you know, more of a realness again to Sarah Brown. Every single uh, song that really does have a meaning, and it, that was hard to find, uh, but you know, throughout the way, uh, eventually, uh, I really, I really got a good understanding of this character, and that was probably the best payoff ever. You look at him as this stereotypical leading man. When you think of him, you kind of think of a Frank Sinatra type character, and and so I really look to Frank Sinatra to find a lot of inspiration in my character. I was a duo with Trey Gaines, who played Nicely Nicely Johnson. I wanted to present Benny in a way that he was believable. Maybe he was a little more um, extreme in the way that I played him, so he would be a little more humorous too. I understood how the character like talked and everything, but like I didn't know how to portray the character like as I walk. Like always was like asking Mr. Steiner for help to like figure out how my character would walk or like how would my character hold this book. I think my favorite memory from the show would be seeing Grace Platt in If I Were a Bell. Me and my fellow actress Grace Platt, who played Sarah, had a great, great time. You see her character be very stiff and then all of a sudden in that, in that song she shifts and she becomes um, almost a different person. In the song, Grace's character, Sarah, had one too many adult beverages before. And just watching Grace develop through that was um, a favorite memory of mine from the show. And then another would be seeing the chemistry. Chemistry. Chemistry? Yeah, chemistry. Between Nick and Grace as they, as they built their relationship through the show. It really happens out in the blue. You, you don't really expect it, but then there's just this connection that was just so really interesting to work with. So I haven't really gotten to play a part like Adelaide. She's really fun and quirky and she has this really strong accent. So when it came to how I prepared for the show, that was the first thing I did when I was diving into her character development because I knew that's what I was going to struggle with the most. But it was really fun and I had a really great time developing her character. 
Hello, nice India. Madeline Pigeon. You go ahead, girls. Order me a tuna fish on rye and a chocolate sundae with tomato, ketchup, and mayonnaise. <laughs> okay, Adelaide. We gotta get back to the hot box. You still rehearsing? Yeah, that slave driver, Charlie, he's been working us all day. Finally, I says, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get out of here and get something to eat. And he says, you don't want to eat. You just want to sneak out and meet that cheap bum Nate in Detroit. And what did you say? I told him, I says, I'll meet whoever I want to. The most challenging part, probably, would be, um... When are the crap shoots starting? You know, it's the most anticipated point of the show, and like, it's it's a big, high action, high event type uh, situation and stuff. And like, keeping your energy up through that, and keeping the character up through that, and the stress and the uh, stakes high and stuff. And uh, after that point, it just it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. There's just so much within that scene. There's so much through the rest of the show that you just have to keep all your energy up. And I think that's the hardest part. Because a lot of us had many different characters if you were in like in an ensemble role. We had to constantly collaborate with directors and mentors. Um, they gave us a lot of creative freedom with the show. And I wrote down every number that I was in, every dance number that I was in, and then I made a character for each one of those roles. And I gave that character a name, and I gave them a place that they were from, and a spouse or a partner, and how they had gotten there. In Runyon Land, um, a choreographer had assigned um, all of these different roles for us and I was the nurse and then one of my friends was a sailor and it was like the iconic nurse sailor end of world war like that kiss thing and it's like two seconds of the show um, but it was my favorite two seconds. Artistically I really wanted to bring a lot to my character as a hotbox girl because it's so free and you can do so much with it. All of the Hotbox girls had a lot of fun creating their character backstage with this. It was really neat to be able to create our own characters and they just really came to life on stage with that collaboration. My responsibilities involved rehearsing the music, teaching the small group numbers, the big group numbers, coaching the soloists and just making sure all the music was ready to go. Usually dance numbers we rehearsed before they did choreography, so they're familiar with their music before they have to go out and learn their steps and their blocking. So I really wanted to grow as a, as a singer. Uh, th this show is very um, demanding of Sarah Brown and her voice. Uh, I, I experienced a lot of growth in my voice and my abilities were just changing and there were new abilities that I was able to uh, achieve and really this show has helped me uh, help my voice uh, growth and I really was just so grateful that I got to you know develop uh, my technique and my ability as a singer. I brought a different thing to the table. I added riffs and like, and then the directors added stuff on too. So like, it was like my thoughts and their thoughts put together with like the regular Broadway version. So I feel like it was just great to bring something different to the table. And I hollered, someone save me. That's the moment I will know. Thank the Lord. Sky Masterson, that is his big song. 
of the show. That is his moment to steal the spotlight. I think one of the greatest triumphs, at least from my end, would be getting that harmony to come together for the guys at the end of Oldest Established. It was something that we rehearsed from day one. It was really exciting to hear them do that on the stage in the, in the context of the show. It's the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. Our choreographer Megan Bliss and I work very closely together to ensure that the dance is a continuation of the storytelling of the overall show. It's important to both of us that the choreographed numbers continue to drive the story forward rather than just creating a spectacle and a break from the story for the audience. Megan also collaborates very closely with our students. We utilize student dance captains in order to help all of our students have the resources they need in order to refine and tweak their dance performances. For this particular production, the dance captains worked closely with Megan to ensure that the style of the dancing would closely match the fun Runyon Land style of the overall show. Most of the time I was collaborating with the choreographer being a dance captain and also one of the main dancers in some of the dance numbers. And just working with her and making sure as a dance captain we were cleaning things in the style that she wanted them to and made everything look how she visioned it was a huge collaboration between myself and the choreographer, Miss Megan. I felt like we were a really tight-knit group and it was just, it was really cool to see, especially in Crapshoot Ballet, it was just so technical and every person had a part in it and if that one person was off, the whole thing was off, so we really had to come together and collaborate, which made just being in the dance ensemble it was just such a collaborative experience and it was really fun. I got to become really good friends with some of my fellow dancers, which was really just, it was awesome. I think the thing I loved the most about this show was the dance numbers. As Adelaide, I feel really lucky. I, I think I personally got to be in some of the funnest numbers in the show. And our choreographer even let me sneak in the Crab Shooters Ballet for a little bit, which was so much fun. I think the songs and the dances are what I'll always cherish the most about this show. Uh, I'd never really been in as many dance numbers as I was. Before the show, I was like, I want to be a dancer in this show, and I want to prove to the department and to all the people I'm performing in front of that I have what it takes to take it to that next level. Along with that, I wanted to have a character that many would enjoy and that many would see even though I wasn't named. Because this is a heavy dance show, we gave our students the opportunity to apply to be swings for the dance numbers. This created an added educational opportunity and also provided a safety net for our dancers. I have been a swing um, for several different shows at FC. Um, I'm really happy I got to be one again this year. But basically it entailed um, me and another swing, there were two of us, we split tracks. Um, so she had half of the girls in the number and I had the other half and we learned all of their parts. It, it was really fun to show someone the ropes because um, I mean, I, I find swinging to be a lot of fun. Our technical theater students worked very closely with me as the director and designer, as well as with Mr. Willis, our technical director. I collaborate with my peers throughout the pre-production and production stages of this show. In the pre-production, we have things called production meetings every Monday, so we get together and talk about ideas for the show. And during the show, we have a debrief after every single run or rehearsal, so we all know what page we're on and we all have ideas together. Our technical theater students work closely with adult mentors in addition to our technical director so that they are able to excel in their specialized areas of focus. My responsibilities for the production uh, were coordinating all of the, the technical elements of the show, uh, but I spent most of my time executing the scenic design, building the set, um, working with the students and adult volunteers uh, to, to ensure that that is, was executed um, based, on, based on the vision provided, uh, as well as um, coordinated with, with the uh, other adult staff members for sound and lighting. And I was the props assistant in Guys and Dolls. This role required me to bring props on and off stage, usually to do with set dressings and making sure actors had the correct props at the correct times. 
As the flight captain, I was responsible for a small team of three to four people known as the fly crew, and we were responsible for everything that comes up and down in the air during the show. My responsibilities entailed making sure that the vision of the director was fulfilled and to be as close to authentic as possible as far as guys and dolls were concerned. I think my favorite memory was when the girls came down the stairs in their beautiful blue and white outfits from Take Back Your Mink. I had decided to do blue and white mink and it looked absolutely gorgeous and every night the girls were so proud when they came down those stairs. It was our first main stage show of the year and a lot of these, uh, these young technicians uh, held first time leadership roles. They all rose to the occasion, led to a lot of really wonderful discussion uh, and collaboration with them. Uh, and, and really, I think, benefited them greatly uh, by the end of the production. They, they grew significantly, and it was very rewarding to watch them do so, and, and it made me very proud. This is my first show working on at Floyd, so these were kind of my first tech weeks and meetings I'd been to, and so this show was very informative to me um, because it really showed me how things work so I can be prepared in future shows, which I really thought found important for me. One unique approach I take with any position I'm in during a show is how to incorporate more technology into that position. So, for example, as flight captain, I helped create an automated queue system that works on an iPad and it shows the flight crew what key we're on during the show so they always know where we're at. Um, the most challenging moment was definitely Havana, the number, because it was go, 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 and we had multiple changes at multiple moments, and so that was kind of the most challenging moment, but I learned a lot of stuff from that number each night, and it's helped me become more um, diligent and like time-oriented when it comes to quick changes on sets. When the curtain went up on this production, it was entirely in the hands of our students, all the way until the final bow. The most challenging aspect of the show for me was definitely the number Havana, when we had, at one point, six line sets moving at one time, and I had seven people to keep tabs on and know what's happening when, and everything had to go at exactly the right time so the number lined up and looked perfect to the audience. I come away from shows of Floyd Central with a very similar takeaway each time, and it's, it's overwhelming gratitude for the experience, um, and, and my involvement with it. I'm just really thankful that I got to be a part of Guys and Dolls. It was a show that I never really saw coming, I guess. It wasn't one that I expected to love as much as I did. And as upset as I am that we didn't get to take it to the festival, I'm really grateful for the opportunities that came from it and that we get to do stuff like this and that I got to become as close as I did to a lot of the cast members and crew in the show. Well, the show was just a blast to work on and I met so many people along the way and made wonderful friends and learned so much. As a cast, I think throughout this process, we grew a lot. The younger students hadn't been in as many shows with us and the older students kind of just lost their, their mentors, so we were becoming the mentors. And I think we kind of learned how to balance that with each other and how to step up and the older students really helped the freshmen and the sophomores in this. I learned a lot. Um, I got to show people a lot about what I'd always loved about this show. And I got to express my love of this show, musical theater, and just that entire sort of golden age of musicals in a way that I hadn't gotten to do before. And that was just fantastic. I really appreciated how professional everyone was in working with the show. It just made the whole experience for me so much more enjoyable. I was brought a lot closer to people that I was not really close to before the performance. I'm so grateful for my opportunity to perform with Guys and Dolls, and I'm very grateful uh, that I was able to meet all the people that I did and uh, grow my relationship with everybody that I did. It was all in all a really fun experience and a show that I'll never forget. It was really hectic at times and sometimes it ran into problems, but we always worked through it as a team and I think that was really special and I really enjoyed the show for it. I just really loved being a part of the show. I felt like I grew a ton and I loved dancing in the dance ensemble. It was so much fun and I made so many new friends and I just learned so much that I really, going into it, didn't think I would learn. 
and yeah I, i'm gonna miss the show it was so fun and it's a memory that will always be in my heart it was it was so fun we really appreciate the edta staff as well as our adjudicators for inviting our production to be part of the festival we also want to say a big thank you to edta for supporting us through this crazy year and for enabling us to come together for this virtual form of the festival thank you very much i know we're going to be so happy we're gonna have a little and Nathan will be there sitting beside me every single night. Achoo!